Welcome to Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready. We're about to live in your head rent-free. Welcome to episode 88 of Snakes and Otters. I am Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. All right. This is a Hoopajoob, fellas. Hoopajoob! Hoopajoob! for the Hoopajoob. And this is one we have been looking forward to. As we, you know, we said it almost every episode we do, that we're looking forward to it. But this one... We, we plan them all. Because we so plan them all. obviously it's stuff we like. Exactly. Right. But this one, I think, holds a special place in our hearts. Because this is why Gen X is the best generation. Yes, uh, we're talking smack today. That's right. Yes, we're doing a little snake and snakes and honor smack talk oh, because guess. it goes. You know, you have to also say then the 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 corollary is all know. the others suck. Oh right? yes, <laughs> that's Gen, right. Gen X rules. Everybody else drools. There you go. And I'm looking at you, baby boomers. Yeah, well, that's pretty much. Yeah, we can probably agree with all that. Yeah, we were discussing in the show prep words we shouldn't say, and Martin almost went off the reservation calling the other generation something we can't repeat. We had to talk him off the ledge a little bit, and he's going to behave himself, he says. Yes. Well, you know, we I would rather drop the F-bomb probably than drop that one. Yeah, so, it was... Uh, uh, you know, whether we agree with it or not. Is the, yeah. Yeah. So, so oh. out of deference to my comrades here, uh, I'll try to behave myself. You usually manage most yes, of the time. Yes, well, yeah. I in, mean, and in fairness, the only one that's ever dropped an F-bomb on air is me. Yes. <laughs> that was a long time ago, and we bleeped it out, but still... It yeah. happens occasionally. We get through. Yeah, I had to emotional. get a little creative with the Audacity uh, okay. software to, to get great. rid of that one. And, yeah, but so you know the concept why Gen X is the greatest. First, let's talk about what it means to be yes. a generation because we were we probably spent more time in the show prep going over this it, because generation when we were growing up it meant something different than I think what it does now. Yeah, uh, you know we talk about. Um, Baby boomers are probably the first named generation in people's um, consciousness. Uh, there are other names, for, you know, there's yeah. names for others prior to that. Because it was kind of retroactively applied. I was going to say, kind of retroactively saying, applied. What, what, yeah. once, once you name boomers, then it's like, well, what are the other ones? So right. then you I, had to go back. You might have had some names for the, for the you know, the lost generation, the silent generation, well, you know, uh, pre-World War II. Hemingway cre- created the term lost generation. Right. So that actually predates that. And the greatest generation, of course... It is what it is, but that wasn't really named until really, you know, the eighties. Yeah. Right. right. So it, that was kind right. of a retroactive. But baby boomers, that's where it starts. And as, as Francis said in the show prep, there's a stake in the ground. Yep. Yeah. That's post World War Two. Yeah. That's, that's uh, late forty five yeah. at the earliest, but forty six is when it really takes off. Right. Yes. Because that's basically all those guys coming home, and you know they're Do happy it. to see their wives and girlfriends. Very well put, yes. sir. That Doing is what comes naturally when you've that's been right. that's right. when you've been shooting Nazis and and all that, or you over got a in lot the of Pacific. testosterone still. You got to get rid of it, it somewhere. It was time to come you, home you and get busy. Your beloveds, very that's much right. so. That's... So the baby boomers are called such because it's literally what it is. It's a boom. Uh-huh. There's a huge number of children yes, being born. Huge, huge population explosion. And it's about 20 years where we define that. And when you start talking about generation, um, you know, originally generation is the term that was used because about every 20 years is when you would have kids. You know, you're, yeah. you know, it's 20 years from parent to child and then from that child to the grandchild, but usually about another 20 years. Yeah. Now that... Obviously, ebbs and flows. Yeah, you depending can, on the culture. Can what be happened. as late as thirty, but sometimes around it can be a little earlier. Sometimes it can be seventeen or eighteen. That's right. <laughs> you know? yeah. but it's um, around that. I mean, but yeah, that's the but statistics now that's don't not, do a city favors in this. No, sometimes. but now that's not even really the case because people are waiting longer to have kids. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you can't even really say twenty years. And as that's happening, the number of generations and the time we are giving them has shrunk. So Gen X is from sixty five. Until, depending on who you talk to, 81 to 85. Yeah. yeah. If you go to the 20 years, it's 85. If you, if you go with the conventional wisdom, and I'm using these scary air quotes there. Yeah, very cause scary. Because, you know, conventional wisdom, I usually think, is very unconventional and very, not very wise. So It's very well put, uh, sir. Yes, yeah, very unconventional and not very wise. Uh, conventional thinking means nobody's thinking. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. Don, you did a good job again. <laughs> Exactly. You are ham- yeah. You know you're really encroaching upon my my territory, but that's all right. That's okay. We can we can do that. But it, that's uh, the mutual respect that we have allows us. to That's do that. right. This is that's true. true. Not just not anybody could do that. You know. That's true. So after the the baby boomers, you've got the Gen X, which is us. That's us. That's the right. best. Yep. The best. Uh, then you've got Gen Y, because what comes after X 
It's why. That's kind of where it started. There's been yeah. talk about different names for different things and generations it, at times. People right. throw and something Gen against y the wall doesn't, and it doesn't stick. Gen Y doesn't seem to be used all that much. Then, then they start talking about millennials because that became... So, supposedly, Gen Y and millennials are the same. same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and millennials because they became adults right at the turn of the millennium. Right. So that, that would, again, be that early 80s crew that's coming to about 18, 19 years old right at 2000. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and somewhat beyond, I guess. I mean, I guess it depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah. And where you want to start. And then there's Gen Z. And honestly, I'm not sure what the, the cutoff point for that truly no, is. 96, 96 is what they say. Yeah. So say you know, you're talking numbers. 10 to 15 years max yeah. before that. And if you're going to do that, then we've got to be on another one because if you're only going to get 15 years, which is yeah. about what it is, we're yeah. ready for another one. It's called yes. Generation Alpha. Starting in 2010? Yeah, exactly. That's right. And now that Well, and then we're only five years from the next one. So, <laughs> well, I mean, that's exactly right. This is kind of uh, why I'm saying that the whole time thing yeah. doesn't and, really work. And yeah. there's there's a reason uh, for that acceleration. <laughs> yes, I was uh, just going to start. Uh, uh, yeah, so again, when you start thinking about these as, as sociological phenomenon... As opposed to truly generational parent... Parent, child, child, child. yeah. Because right. that doesn't really work either, because you have somebody born in the middle of one generation. Well, well, yeah, because birth rate is constant. Yeah, I mean... the, the, well, it's the level, all the time. The, exactly. The levels uh, fluctuate, but, yes. but the fact that it's going on is, is a constant. But that's what it became, is when you start defining these generations, not just because they were born in this window, it's because sociologically, culturally, behaviorally, there are... Um, commonalities. Yes. And ding, ding, ding. That's kind of what so, we're basing our whole premise here on. So the life experience, when you think about someone's life experience from, say, 55 to 75, yeah, things are changing, but it's still the space age, kind of. But since then, when you think about the pace of cultural change, and you think about the pace of technological change and how that affects our behavior... Boys, that's just accelerating. Yes. And we've, well, we've talked about this on <laughs> yeah. several occasions, yeah. how things are moving so much faster. Change from technology, how things work, uh, the types of things. It, that's just, a, it's a big driver. It's a huge driver. And it, and it drives not just how we live, but it's driven our entertainment. Not just in how we consume our entertainment, but even the content of the entertainment. Yes. I was watching or reading... Uh, a, a, yeah, I think it was reading. I forget what the book was, but it was set in the early '80s, so nobody had cell phones. So a lot of the conventional plot tropes that you would have uh-huh. in a novel set in 1980 don't exist for novels set in the year 2020. That's just right. 40 years later. And just, yeah. just writing set. Well, the novel I'm working on takes place in 1991. You got to be very careful that you don't anach- yes. reverse anachronize yourself. You have to figure out ways that people communicate. That can keep your story moving, but not take you out of the moment. Saying, "Wait a minute, you know, right. you can have cell phones there, but they're not ubiquitous." Well, that's right. I mean, that's a that's a rare one. Yeah, yeah. and it's uh, so yeah, that's you know that time frame is a great um, representation for our generation because yeah, we span worlds, yeah. we span cultural epochs. Yes, we remember a time when. There were only three channels on television. <laughs> Four when you count the independent. Because well, everybody had an independent station, right. at least one. So you know, you, so you've got, <clears throat> but uh, uh, but yet we are technological innovators, and generally technologically astute. We still get the new tech most of the time, uh, whereas our parents' generation, not not a clue. You, right, it's it's left them behind. Well, um, uh, priest I know is just a few years older than us. I wouldn't say he's totally clueless when it comes to technology, no. but very close. I mean, he's I mean, he's not yet sixty. Yeah, but he so like he's just like three, four years. We're we talking. About, is this a, a choice, a luddite thing, or is it just that's it's just, just not his thing? Not his thing. thing. Yeah, not. and that's that's kind well, of. It's a, also the way he thinks too. He's not a, a linear thinker thing too. He's yeah. very much a. Uh, I forget how he put it. Uh, Dynamic. No. But he, he, I forget the, the phrase he used, but he's very much a um, uh, 
you know, he's got to talk everything out, and it, it bounces around subject to subject before he gets to the decision or the point. Yes, yes. Or so he's a, so yeah, and effectively using linear. technology kind of forces a click this first, then yes. this first, then this next. That's, that's then a, you're done. That is, yeah, because that's a very linear way of working. Exactly. Yeah. So that, I think that's one of the reasons why he struggles, and yeah. it may be the technology has even forced that kind of thinking to the side. You know, that's mm-hmm. uh, that would probably be a great sociological study. That wouldn't it though? Yeah. You know, how many people who are nonlinear thinkers like him exist now compared to forty years ago? Yeah, because if linear thinking is something that is environmental or strongly environmental, we may not be producing them anymore. Exactly. Because children uh, from almost from the cradle, uh, to their detriment, I might say are being given cell phones and new technology immediately Yes, uh, as an entertainment device. Well, uh, and that's the other thing. Because it does all of the work, that's a bad thing. Entertainment that requires no input on your part is a bad thing, especially for the young. Yeah, And, and again, we straddle this. And we're yeah. not... You know, the world doesn't understand that yet. The consequences of all that are... I think, are I think we're starting to. Yeah, I, absolutely. We're but starting to. How do we walk it back is the problem. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, there's a good question. Yeah. So... Uh, we kind of been kind of like the discussion with the preaching. We've kind of been all over the place. We do that sometimes, uh, yeah. which shows we are linear and non-linear. We have the ability to uh, our generation, not just us, yeah. I think, to to do that to on demand. Uh, on de- oh, that's a great way to put it. Yes, yeah. on demand. We can do that on demand. We are very flexible, and probably generations prior to us could also do it just as well. Maybe maybe not. Didn't have to do it as often because uh, you know the. The need to shift wasn't there. Yeah, yeah once they got in a pattern, they would, generally they would stay. I mean, if you know a boomer, boomers don't adapt. Not very well, that's true. They, yes. So it's really hard for them to change now, is, that gear to lift the oars out of the water. Is that because of where direction. they are now in the process, or have they always been that way? It's See, probably a little question. bit of both. There's a question because it's... as we age to a certain point... We almost uh, our ability to be adaptable almost metastasizes. I think just it's less can't. our ability than our desire. Yeah, well, because yeah. The, the, yeah. part yeah. of it is, will is a major component. To that. Yeah, absolutely. Part of it is we like what we like. We're comfortable with what we're comfortable with, and we don't. We're not as enticed by the shiny new objects. There's not as much reason to then seek out new stimulus. Right, right. In a way, that's also a good. Uh, indicator of how technology, especially these little computers we carry in our hands and our phones and our tablets and everything else, uh, can be a bad thing. But you know, we have lost the ability to. Um, uh, I want to say not react to the stick. Repeat what you just said because I, I want to make sure because I, I was it, keyed we, off we, what you said. And yeah, I want to well, make sure just, I get this right. We just don't have the desire to seek out new stimulus anymore. Yes. So. It has changed how our brain chemistry is literally changing because of these things. Yeah. And it's an addiction uh, when you have to seek out that stimu- new, ever new stimulus. It's For a, instance, pornography is a great example. Absolutely. Of this. It's a dopamine. Even hitter. if you start with, you know, dirty magazines like we had growing up because there was no internet. You know, right. everybody had, you know, knew where their dad's dirty magazine collection was. Every kid, uh, you know, that, that's a thing. And then you move to the scrambled cable. Scrambled cable. Yes. Another great, yes. I think that's great an point. elbow. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah. Because uh, the signal, you know, this is back where we had boxes. You know, you, could, you might be able to pick it up and, you know. It, but anyways. You jam a butter knife under the thing there. Maybe it would right. raise the circuit. And then you, you graduate to softcore pornography. Skinamax, you know. Yeah. That's true. Right. And then we start looking at hardcore pornography. Generally, the, the, the way it works is, you, you know, you look at relatively mild vanilla stuff in the world of pornography but you require ever more correct it's, it's a uh, dopamine hit yeah. and it's 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 100 percent addictive actually far more so than crack cocaine even because there's no symptoms for it uh at least not directly not, tieable not, yes. yeah, yeah not, not that you can see uh however relationship wise uh it's destructive it yeah. really is because uh, it it creates an image that is 100% addictive because that's you're using natural brain chemicals to work that way, and uh, no 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 real uh, partner can, can can compete. It, it destroys relationships all over the place. It's one of my yeah. great crusades against because I think that it, it's it's harmful to so many people. 
and, and stealthily. People that use it or they're in the throes of it, they resist, of course, any restriction upon it, but they don't realize they have the choice, sure, but they're choosing a bad thing. And that's right. what's not been put out well, there. You know, freedom is often misunderstood, and we're going to, this is a huge rabbit hole, uh, obviously. You know, we do this, though. Yes. yes. You know, yeah. there's. I'm, I'm going to put a carrot down at the bottom of the rabbit hole and pull it out, but go ahead. So there's freedom and there's license. Yes, that's correct. License is the lack of restrictions upon your behavior. Mm-hmm. Freedom is the ability to choose good. That's right. That's and addictions remove the ability to choose good. So that less need of stimulus uh, that I think is indicative of generations after us is technological. Yeah. And that's part the of the thing aging. that has driven yeah. the changes because it because they're mostly technologically driven and they're mostly uh, things that you carry around all the time. That's one of the reasons why it's so bad is because your stimulus is constant. Yeah. You know, when we were growing up, you know, the, the, the trope was the darkened movie theater where you snuck off to see your, your porn films. You know, now you can sit in your home and, you know, it, well, nobody yeah, knows. That's correct. It's free. It's in the palm of your hand. And any variation no you want. Pun no intended. pun intended at all. But uh, uh, and it's it's that's one of the reasons it's grown so much. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it. Um, let's just say that the reason that it's grown is because we've allowed it to. Right. So, I mean, that's just indicative of the, the that need for stimulus that, that Martin talked about. Yeah. And so you're blaming Martin for the <laughs> rabbit hole. <laughs> Uh, no, maybe. No. no. <clears throat> okay. But but I think but like I said though, I think it's indicative of why the generational shifts yeah. have accelerated. Yeah. And and again, think about just stress that someone from nineteen fifty five to about nineteen seventy five for the most part the cars you drove were uh, essentially the same technology, just the right. bodies were smaller. Yep. Um, Got a little bit more efficient here and there, more power. Yeah, yeah. but, it, you know, it, they didn't really change. The, well, your media ch- your your abilities media changed. Your ability to change. Communication didn't really change in that whole 20 year, but you right, think you about went from now. from dial phones to push button and that was it. Yeah. yeah. So you think I mean, about You still have now, the television channels and the movies yeah, are about it, the same. Uh, like if you took an iPhone 6 and handed it to somebody from 1975, they would think an alien dropped that off. Right. Uh, but if you hand it to somebody today, it's a doorstop, and it's not that old, right? But it's it's like Maybe not oh, an iPhone is, six, but yeah, you know, it's How, like this Windows is a, Phone, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like yes, this, I had one at one time. Oh, uh, those are the bomb. Yeah, I loved my Windows. Uh, yeah, it was it was great. I mean, yeah, it was a company not the phone. ones that would had the 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 inter the metro interface or you know just you know square Squares buttons. That on. That's what around. I yeah. had. Yes, it I didn't care for that as much, but the ones before that I thought were awesome. Yeah. I kind of the one I had. It was it was the full screen, and it was it was kind of nice. It I had worked. one where the keyboard slid out and it flipped up. No, I didn't have oh, any, no, that. I didn't have any that. Mine was a later technology. And it would be yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it, we would look at that and go, no, no, I, I got to have at least a 10R. Come on, right, right. Um, so it, that acceleration, I think, accounts for the the generational uh, numbers, you know, squeezing in for to fewer years. Because that common experience is so rapidly changing. It is. You know. And the funny thing is, the, the experience is changing, but I think what's changing about it is the expression. So, because, I mean, you know, people are still people. You have relationships. Uh, you know, you go to a job or you now you stay home for your job <laughs> during the pandemic if you're, you know, somebody who can. Uh, but, I mean, the... Overall structure of our, our lives are still relatively the same. You know, we live in houses, we have families. Uh, the nuclear family is is has uh, is not the only expression of family, which has always been true. You know, a hundred years ago, family didn't just mean mom, dad, brother, sister. It meant grandma and grandpa and your aunts and uncles, and you know, mm-hmm. it was multi generational as well as multi-width, I guess, for lack of a better term. Multi-unit. It was much more the extended family. And, of course, now it's it, that's changing uh, as well. But the the essential idea okay. of how we live, what we, you know, are the same. Huh. The expression of what we're doing in our daily lives is, is what is what's changed. Different. Yeah. So, for instance, let's take social media. Uh, before us, you know, boomers were, uh, especially the older half of the boomers, 
the ones that are already on Social Security and, and are dying off now, um, those are the ones that probably struggled the most with new technology, especially when you got smartphones. That, yeah, uh, that was a that was a, a sea change. Yeah, everything changed with that. Uh, you know, best example of that is that commercial with. Uh, the three old ladies, and I'm talking about... You know, <laughs> that's not how this works. Exactly. That's not how any of this that's works. That's not how any of this works. Oh, yeah, that's right. I unfriend you. That yes. One, uh, I, um, I, I love that one. I, it, I, it's I, hilarious yeah, you because... You find it on YouTube, and I, I watch it occasionally, and it'll just it's as funny then as it ever was. It, it really is. Because we know people like that. Yes. Um, so, But social media is a great, I think, indicator of which generation you're probably in. Because, you know, first there was... The first big one was uh, MySpace. Well, first big one was technically... Compuserve. Well, yes, that's right. Yes. And then AOL, AOL and Genie, for those of us Genie. that remember yeah, that. Yeah, we were, loved we were on Genie, absolutely. Um, and then AOL was the big deal. And then finally, once uh, the internet really took off, because uh, there was time between AOL and Facebook, there really wasn't social media Yeah, well, in the same way. Because you know, you've got dial-up that goes <laughs> slightly into broadband, and it's never all that broad, actually. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're getting into T1 technology, and now... It's, it's, it's very different. Yeah. Uh, the Internet has essentially different. become a technology. I, uh, yeah. One of the millennials that I work with, he has argued that uh, Internet should be... The Internet is basically a right. Uh, okay, oh. uh, what, I mean, is it a right like... The, the right to enter the marketplace and purchase Internet for your personal well, needs. his point is, is right. it's a right in the same sense that every house needs to have certain things hooked up to it before you can build it. Before you can sell it, right? You gotta have electricity. You gotta have water. You oh, gotta run okay. the cable to it. It's a utility. A utility that should be present as yeah. part of building codes, essentially. That's, but okay. to him, it was it That's was it was it was not right. a right in the sense that it should be always free to me. Ex well. He's a socialist. Uh, so, I was going to say, that's you know, kind of where we're going. He's at the age where he's, you know everything well, then, should be free. But. Well, yeah, water well, and electricity and internet. You know, yeah. to him or let me let me swing this around a little bit though, because. I think there are some other aspects of these generational things. Oh, yes. That it's good to point out, again, those common experiences. Because we know that for a long time, uh, you know, our artistic presence, or what do you want to call it, um, the popular media, mm -hmm. you know, was driven by boomers for a long time. So it was about their experiences. Yes. Oh, well, Sitting yeah. in front of the television, eating TV dinners, you know, that's kind of their first experience from the 50s. So yeah. we, we talked about a Christmas movie in um, A Christmas Story. Right. You know, that's very much a boomer nostalgia thing. Very much so. Because yeah. it, it kind of... Boomers as children. Yes. Yes, for us it's nostalgic because we watched that movie well, about... Now, that. that but is it's exactly. a really kind of boomer experience. Yeah. Very much so. And, you know, and into the 50s. So everything about Sputnik and Howdy Doody and all of that and Lone Ranger, that's a boomer experience. Right. Gen X, our experiences, and again, listeners, we're at the very beginnings of it. Correct. Francis here is year right one. at the beginning. Yeah, He's year 65. one. Um, Robert and I are year two. Our experiences are... Our parents are both now in the workforce. We're yep. the first ones kind of coming home with our keys to latch the house. Key and the, latch key kids. Latch yeah, key, in right. our pockets or around our necks and coming home and entertaining ourselves. Right. We may not have been that at the yes. very beginning, but by the time as we grew... That, by the time we hit high school, school yeah, and even before. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a done deal. Yeah, it also depends on how many siblings you had at home. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I am the youngest, but my uh, sister and brother are seven and nine years older than me, so... I was halfway to being an only child. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they're going to be working outside the home about the time you hit 13, 14. Yeah. Well, yeah. My sister, she's you know gone and married uh, by the mid seventies. Yeah. And my brother, you know, he's in and out. My well, you know my brother. Yes, we know. <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Yeah, let's just leave it at that. Um, and so, but yeah, my parents both worked. I don't remember a time when my mother was ever a stay-at-home mom. And it was, you know, nothing for me to come home, especially during high school, because, you know, growing kid in high school, constantly eating. Yeah. Yes. You know, to come home and pull out the fry daddy. Remember oh, the fry daddy became big? thing for you, yeah. And, 
you know, drop in a thing of French fries and uh, a chicken patty or a veal patty. Those those breaded yeah. veal patties, deep fried. Sure, let, letting a child have oh. hot burning oil in the middle of the kitchen, that's a good idea, don't you think? <laughs> well, you know. But we did it. That's we right. did it. Well, yeah. it's like, you know, we rode bikes without helmets. Oh, yeah, that's correct. I still think. We're the know, last group to really, yeah, ride the bike with it. Well, you and, know, and to set up a ramp didn't and then. have seat belts, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, they didn't seat have Seat belts were not a thing then. Uh, yeah. You know, you're talking about 19. I mean, we bought a new Caprice Classic in 1976. Oh, no, that's it, a classic. It, it, it's a classic ride. car. It was a huge car. It got all four of us kids in the back seat at the same time, mind you. Comfortably. It was comfortably. It's the first time I'd ever seen seat belts in a real car. Yeah. We took the darn thing to Florida, which is about a 10 hour ride from where we're at. And we were in the back, you know, as the hooligans we were. None of us were belted, oh, of course. Yeah. We made my little brother sit in the uh, uh, the back uh, of the, the package shelf. The package shelf, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember doing stuff like Absolutely. that. I remember being sleeping in the floorboard. A car big enough for a child to sleep my on brother, the floorboard. We, we put my, to Texas. Me and my yes. two, me and my two sisters basically bullied my little brother, who's the smallest, to sitting in the floorboard so we could have more room. It's just what you did. You it's exactly it. Yeah, he, he he got over. It, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. So that you know that experience then starts to mold. Our behavior later on, of course, family because, of origin is is absolutely essential so to understanding. We're who we are. we're comfortable with the idea. I can come home to a house that's empty, and I'll take care of myself. Yes, yeah. I can make my own dinner, or lunch, or skip it if I want. Doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah, we we grew up immersed in the idea of self care before that was even a term. Self reliance. Yeah, that was something that we uh, we learned because that's and it wasn't just us doing it. It was all of our friends doing it too. Right. So there was the whole concept right. of socialization of this is just what you do. And that's we another didn't see good us point. As being wrong. Our friends and who we saw mostly at school. Now you might, you know, if you if you had friends in the neighborhood, yeah, if you have a neighborhood, you know. If yeah, we were, we were kind of the last group to really go to school with people from your neighborhood, too. After us, schools kind of stopped, at least in this town for sure, and I bet lots of other towns, too, stopping neighborhood Depends on how schools. big they are. Yeah. Um, you know, and you started to be, well, I've got friends in high school, but for, we're from all up and down the highway. Yeah. yeah. So it was really hard to see large groups of people without... A car. Without a car, yes. Now, of course, this generation doesn't care too much about cars because they can see each other without them. Yeah, and once you get to high, once you got to high school, for us, even if you grew up in a neighborhood with lots of kids, that didn't guarantee that your friends were those right. same. Because you know how it is. Once you get to high school, especially if you come from feeder middle schools to the larger high school, which in a way, with the Catholic schools here in, in Louisville, you yeah. would have, now, you didn't grow up here in Louisville, but no, rural. You, you saw the same effect, even though you go to Catholic grade school, you saw when you got to Catholic high school, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's some of that. That, you know, all of those, your friendships change when you get to high school. Sure. Just because, I mean, it's just the way that is. Yeah. So, yeah, school and the extracurricular activities were where you saw your friends. Yeah. Now, on weekends, yeah, if you didn't have a car, you didn't see them again until Monday. Yeah. Uh, unless they were in your neighborhood. So, yeah, we had to learn to, to be a little more self-entertaining with less because we didn't have all the cable channels. We didn't have phones where we could read books and magazines. And yeah. we didn't have... Not to, not to the 80s. Once you start in the middle 80s, then cable is very commonplace. It is, but it's still not the same level it is today. And even even then, it wasn't... Well, uh, we I mean, have TBS playing repeats of stuff generally. And, well, you know. I mean, well, that's what your independent station was for. Yeah. You know, all those show, chan- uh, like TBS and what have you that plays Big Bang Theory and all these other sitcoms constantly. Yeah. That's what the independent stations did yeah. that you got over the years. And that's where some of those started. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was, you know, TBS, well, yeah. TBS was Atlanta, Turner Broadcasting. Yeah. And he, WGN was Chicago. WGN. Oh, exactly. I love WGN. We used to watch WGN. Is all WGN the even still on cables? I don't yeah. think so. I mean, I can't, so, I can't sometimes they that. get. Sometimes they just don't. I mean, uh, that's you I mean, know. Is it still even a going thing? I believe so. Wow. Um, well, see, well, you know, we've left cable behind a long time ago, like so many other people. Yeah. You just don't. I know. think it is. Still that's looking kind of, systems. Yeah, that's we're kind looking of, at that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, that's another change that we're having at this point in our lives. We've been along the beginning of the change all throughout this technologically changing period, and we've kept up, generally speaking. Yeah. Well, and we're driving a great deal of it. That's Gen X is know. known as an innovative generation. We are entrepreneur again, that 
self-reliance, that idea of self-care, a huge group of Gen X doesn't do ten or doesn't do W twos. They do ten ninety nines. Yep. They are the the entrepreneurs and the and the tech gurus and the people starting new things. Right. It's thought of that kind of in you know popular concept or popular idea that it's the younger generations that drive, but it really isn't. It's no. Xers. That's you're exactly right on that. Uh, uh, are they picking up? Are the younger ones picking up some of it? Yeah, we hope so. I mean, that is kind of the generational process. It's supposed to be. It but, is. Um, I but, do worry though that because uh, I think you've brought up a, a really great point. You know, uh, is the younger generation uh, picking up on this? Because if you think about culturally, especially now, granted, this is a stereotype, and I and I concede right now, mm-hmm. not all members of one of these generations we're talking about are exactly alike. That's obviously patently, demonstrably. False. That's right. But the stereotype of a millennial or a Gen Zer it tends to be somebody who doesn't have, honestly, just is not as flexible Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in certain ways. And in some ways, they're more flexible than we are, uh, which that's partially an age thing. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you, can't, you have to discount that because that's a natural process that everybody goes through. And you can't hold that against somebody. Right, right. Well, they're, I think it's partially the they're, they're, they tend more to allowing license and personal behavior uh, than we would. But that, that's an entirely different kind well, of thing. Well, and it's important for them to realize that everything that they do, we did that. That's true. You know, all you millennials out there that think you're so special because you've got tattoos, who do you think normalized the tattoo? Right. It's our generation. Right. Uh, before us... Yes, our great to, shame is we normalize the tramp stamp. All right, uh, you fine. know, uh, it was thought of, okay, tattoos were for people who'd been in the Navy or bikers. Right. But our generation normalized the idea of a regular person getting some type of body art. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah, that, yeah, because it didn't happen before. So well, you're welcome, like, millennials. <laughs> that's like my kids, you know, my son. God love him. He, he's incredibly smart incredibly bright sometimes though he's totally effing clueless mm-hmm. i love him um because it's so and i but i realize that's also a function of age and, yeah. and i was aren't not they, that different aren't they all from time to time uh, yeah and they're they're a generation of extremes a bit yes that but every, you know, everything gets taken to the most illogical extreme point oh yes he is very much like that that's partially he's uh, he, he's never been tested for but i'm sure he he has asperger tendencies yeah um, just in the way he's so regimented in, in his thinking sometimes, but in how things ought to ought be. To be yeah. But on other things, he's totally, well, why does that matter? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's good. Which drives me there's crazy. A, there's a flexibility there. Um, but there is. But he, he, I forget what it was we were talking about one time. I was like, son, do you think you're smarter than me? And, of course, he was like, because uh, he didn't want to answer. Busted. Yeah, busted. <laughs> that's exactly. right. I was like, uh, no, son, you're not. First of all, book knowledge, specific uh, factual knowledge, yeah. is not the the measurement of how smart. Even is. so, bring it on, baby. I'm well, sure you can. You can. <laughs> if we were to, for instance, have to do to solve quadromial, quadromial equations, I would be hard pressed to do it at first well, yeah, because it's been forever. It's we been haven't forever. needed it. That's yeah. right, and he's he's doing it right now, and yes. he's doing it right now. So there's the recognition of that. But as far as, you know, other things go, no, son, just because you are smart doesn't mean you are smarter than me. There's a, a difference to that. There's a, there's a wisdom component as well. Yes. And, and when you're young, you have a hard time and recognizing well, and, and that. And what, what he doesn't realize is this is the natural way of things is for younger generations to replace older generations over time. Yes. That's what he's recognizing, but he doesn't realize that the reality of that is a slow burn that takes many decades, and there's it, 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 it's changing. We we have become in many respects the parental parents to our own to our own parents. The parent in, child, yeah, in the some parent ways, yeah. child roles morph. Where, well, and that's, as, that's as, always been true. That's always been true. Yes, that's that's always been true. That's what he's discerning, I think. And he's yeah. realizing, wait a minute, shouldn't I be smarter than you? And you know, the day will come, son. Yes, that's going to be true. Hopefully, but, that's because I've you know. <clears throat> but that's a long yeah. time in the future. But. In a way, that's indicative of this change in how we define generations mm-hmm. in some ways, um, because this the speeding up of everything 
and how things I, I think it, it, in some ways it, it's I think it's bad for those generations that have come after us because uh, in a way the changes that are happening are more of the same mm-hmm. the changes that happened for us were sea changes they were very extreme yes as, as compared yes. to changes today while they are they can be extreme but honestly I think they're they more feel more degree. incremental yeah they're very incremental yeah yeah okay we're used to a huge technological shift in X. So when that happens, we're we're a little more prepared for it. But to jump from where we were in the early '80s to where we are now, that we have bridged, you know, is right. really something. So let we me can well I was just as a follow up on yeah, this please. summation, please. should we say? For us, we could conceive of all of the changes that that have happened. They yeah. are not fantastical to us. And right. would not have been fantastical to us in 1984. Right. We saw the march of the technology. Yes, right. because it, it was in our science fiction. Yes, we understood that it was going to well, keep moving. We did. Not all of our generation did. Well, most, I'd say most of us did. Um, it was easy for us to adapt to it because it was something that was conceivable in no. what we... Thank you, Star Trek, Star Wars, and other speculative fiction that yes. we were kind of cut our teeth on. Our parents, the the boomers and before us, because technically my parents are not boomers. They're 10 years prior to that. Yeah, yeah, they're mine mom, are, the silent generation. My, yeah, mine are yeah my mom and dad were born in 34 and 35. 35 they, and 40. They grew up in the me. worst of the... Yeah, they were the, the, the in-between generations, sometimes they're yeah. called. So for them, the whole concept, and they died before smartphones and you know cell phones were around when my my dad died but it was very early very early in in, in, the, in the life of good old nokia's and uh, it's probably even before that it was the motorola <laughs> flips because he died in 93 yeah oh star uh star tech uh, yeah star tech uh, star tech yes yeah. motorola star so well, those are i mean you look movies from then that was the ubiquitous phone yeah. remember you know that was just oh robin williams and hook i mean it was, yeah yeah that's a great one because he's, he's on the thing the whole time and you look at it now and it's just you cringe when you yeah. see that because it's so dated but my my our parents and the reason why boomers i think have a harder time with the change and i think why millennials like to say okay boomer which is so insulting and so denigrating. It, it's disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. And that's yes, never. That's never cool. It's never cool. Yeah, so wrong. Especially when they try to apply it to us. I just want to kick yeah, their well, you know, asses. I mean, pardon my uh, French. Yeah, I mean, just but, because you may ha- be, have advantages that the others didn't doesn't mean you've got to. You've got yeah. to. And just because you understand and like TikTok doesn't mean I have to. No. I understand it. I don't mean I like it. Well, I understand it. It's pointless. But I don't hell. understand it in the sense of yeah, it's pointless. What the. WTF, come on, people. But anyways, so well, the point was, I, it's harder for them, uh, our parents and, and the generation before us, to deal with these changes because for them, it's it, it's it's orders of magnitude. Yeah. Whereas for us, we lived in that first massive change. We've, yeah, we saw that, that we've been climbed. in It really is the computer. The computer Ultimately, age. that's yeah. correct. Well, yeah, we, we were the early adopters of the home computer yes. the pc mm-hmm. that's right so that's why once well, we did Commodore that 64 or vic 20 maybe well, you those, know, those, we those. were in college when a lot of that stuff started to come out and that was kind of the the linchpin time yeah uh if you'd gone back 10 years earlier those that came into ascendancy those post-vietnam kids their experience is very different mm-hmm. because they'd already started to the concrete had started to harden for them so ours was still pretty wet how many of you guys played the uh text-based star trek game on the computers at uh, school, I don't. Th- I don't recall. No, that. I didn't. Oh my gosh! Okay. Uh, there was a there was a Zelda game uh, around that. Time yeah, that was yeah. text based, which was so, really cool. When I say text based, literally, it's because the, the the computer screen was the printer. So you would type in your command, it would print, and then it would you know respond, and yeah, it was just. I remember doing that. I don't know how many times when I was in uh, late grade school, uh, maybe as late as a freshman, but late grade school for sure. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That's okay. I was just going to say, uh, if you laugh at the word influencer, I think we've got a lot in common. <laughs> That's a very interesting way uh, of putting that. Yeah, Because, I mean, there are people that take that term seriously. They do. And well, I just laugh at that. I laugh at the concept, but we need to be careful not to laugh at the effect. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. It yes, can be, uh, there's because, a I mean, powerful effect. I mean, because the prototypical, the first prototypical influencer... Is not Kim Kardashian. It's Paris Hilton. 
Yes, and, who you're hard pressed to even know who it is right. today. But that was the first person that I can think of that was famous for being famous. And that is, if nothing else, one of the best definitions of an influencer that well, I can think of. The, the entire concept around influencer can be a good... It, it's kind of morally neutral. Uh, it depends on the motivation. We're all being, influencers. They're just... Yeah, that's right. What but we think of as influencers in, are... Intending to create a celebrity status around yes. yourself for either financial or otherwise gains. That's a form of manipulation. I'm sorry. Well, it's also one of the most narcissistic expressions well, I've ever seen. kind of where I'm going with that, too. Providing a good or a service that people like, that's great. I mean, you've heard many, many folks on YouTube that can go out there, and they're singing cover songs of great hits or their own music, stuff like that. That's, you know, you're providing something there. Uh, you're showing that you can sing. But to do so because, as you've said before, taking a bath with Fruit Loops and milk and becoming a influencer because yeah. of that... A, that sounds a whole lot like pornography, but all that being said, it's just, just because you can do a thing does not mean that it necessarily is a good thing that you do. Or that it has any value. That it has any value. That's yeah. Star Trek Six, mind you. You're probably wondering how that was going to get in here this time. Just did it. Thank you. No, we already talked about Star Trek earlier. You're talking about the influences in speculative fiction and Star Trek and Star Wars. Yeah, and but this is a little bit more yeah. Anyway, uh, we're at the, at the 40 minute mark. And so I wanted to pause for just a moment, Robert, and let's do bourbon. Drink a bourbon. Yes, it is bourbon time. I was about to do that when you, uh, uh, when I grabbed my glass. And it <laughs> may have been your cue to, to break in, but yeah. So, so uh, we were both heading in the same we same were, direction. Great minds. great minds think alike. So do ours. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know you guys have gone with uh, the, the same bourbon. So since mine is different, I'll start. Yes, please. Um, I, being because today this is a hoopajoo episode number five for this month. Uh, we are not recording this uh, as we often do in a batch. This is a uh, in itself a one off. Well, yeah. Okay. So um, since this is the only bourbon I will probably consume today, I went with the old standby, the double oaked, the Woodford yes. double oaked. It's yeah, it's a it's a great one to have. I've noticed, you know, that bottle seems to keep going down. You must be consuming a lot of it because I don't know if anybody else has drank it over here. I Unless don't think of course I've had my, that much. Well, then again, I have a twenty year old son who lives in the house. Perhaps I should you get myself a magic marker and start Maybe marking sure. labels. Yeah, yes, sure. mark the level. Mark the level and just the just level. see just see where we'll this see if goes. It's disappearing. Yes. Yes. But, yes, evaporation doesn't happen that fast. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and, and Francis and I have hit the Evan Williams single barrel vintage that we raved about recently. Yeah, we cracked, yes. that, they, yes. we cracked that last time we gathered. And uh, that was, you know, it's, I like that a lot. Uh, it was uh, the single barrel stuff. I don't know, perhaps it's the marketer in me, but it just it grabs me off the shelf saying, you know, I'm special. Take me. Which I'm yeah. sure, you know, the marketing department loves that sort of stuff. Well, it implies only been in one barrel. Yeah. But also implies, well, does that mean anything that says it's not single barrel has been in other barrels? Well, it means it's blended. Oh. I was going to say, we're not... They dump all the barrels into a bin and then bottle We're, we're not talking about promiscuity issue yeah, here. These, just wanting to a single barrel that means out. that every bottle is from a single barrel, not blended with other barrels. Yeah, it, it is see, what it is. See, that's why I brought it up, so we can educate our listeners. Right. Whereas the double oaked means it was actually aged in multiple barrels. Yes, yes two to be precise. Uh and speaking of education, there is something that I wanted to bring up, and I had neglected to start with this. Um, I was recently listening to one of our uh, new episodes, The uh, Wolves Among Us, yeah. about the Battle of the Atlantic, and I got a little uneasy about part of it. Yep. I, I felt like we let uh, Admiral Dernitz off the hook just a touch. Really? Uh, yeah. I think we, at one point we said he really wasn't a Hitler fanboy. A sycophant, and that's not quite accurate. He was a committed Nazi yeah. and, and a committed Hitler, and that's how he ended up as the leader of the Flensburg government. Yeah, for what a week? <laughs> yeah, the the, the three week period yeah, there where they were trying to somebody had to sign the sign the document yeah, to be in charge. Yeah, and the, the the idea was hold the Soviets off long enough to retreat from the east and surrender to the Western Allies. That was the goal. Because of this fantasy that somehow, well, we'd shake hands and then we'd turn eastward and we, you know, we turn on Stalin, which was not well, going to well, happen. Well, that's ridiculous. Yeah. No but, matter how much Patton wanted to do it, no, well, <laughs> Eisenhower good. was not going there. But, well, but uh, Dernitz was a committed Nazi and was convicted of crimes against peace. I think mm -hmm. at Nuremberg, uh, he kind of had a plausible deniability with the Holocaust because he didn't 
and running the Navy, he didn't really interact with the SS much. Well, that's what saved his life. But he was the guy who was in Hitler's last political testament as taking over because Goering had started to see the writing on the wall and had supposedly become a traitor to Hitler. And so he got written out. Oh, yeah. And then Himmler escaped. Himmler kind of got written out. Yeah. And Dernitz did manage to kind of hold Himmler at arm's length for two or three weeks. Um, then finally realizing there's, I can't really discuss surrendering if I've got SS guys around. They're going to have to be persona non grata up here. So I just we like to kind of correct those things and as we go. And so I know the guys uh, would want me to bring that up as I kind of re-listen to that episode. But, uh, we let Dernitz off the off the hook a little bit. He, yeah, he, he that is a, one of the the bad things about uh, the the fat. Not want to say fast and loose, but fast and furious nature of the way we record. Yeah, well, yeah sometimes we, we will hour. misstate things, and but we are man enough mm-hmm. sure. to, to put, own up, put the and, correct uh, yes. thing on the record here. Yes. So, listeners, if you ever hear us say something that's not true, or you think might not be true, feel free to email us, send us a tweet. Uh, you know, send us an email, go to our webpage, interact with us at snakesandotters.com, whatever it takes. Let us know, because if we if we miss it, you know, feel free and we will we'll, correct we'll re- those we'll records. As, as brilliant as we may be, we're not omniscient. We may be working right. on it, but, you know, we yes, do Yes, even mistakes. though I tell my wife that, we're, that I'm perfect, I'm not really. We've been there when you've said that. We've seen her eyes roll. We understand how this Yeah, I've been goes. trying to convince her for the last 25 years, and it's That's just right. not, yeah. not, not happening. <laughs> So, uh, also, if you guys would indulge me, to, so we can get back uh, on our topic of Gen X. Um, when I when I think of Gen X, of course, you know, we won our war. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first Gulf War would have been about the time most of us, the, the beginning group was 24, 25 years old. Okay. Um, and, and a right. little, we were so, in our first jobs, basically. Yes. Adults, yeah. Yes, first jobs. And that would have been about the age then, too, of most military members that were not the senior leadership. Obviously, most of the senior leadership would have been, you know, the younger Vietnam officers. Yeah. Like a Colin Powell had been, you know, a Vietnam officer, but then had stayed in. But most of the uh, of the non-officers would have been about our age. And, of course... My hero, P.J. O'Rourke, in his fairly famous book, Give War a Chance, he's a baby boomer, and he is encountering all of these Gen Xers in the Middle East at the time of the Gulf War. And this this paragraph always stands out to me as this is that quintessential Gen X, this is who we are kind of thing. And uh, PJ writes, it's important to remember that the 1991 U.S. military is not made up of Oliver Stone and his hooch-torching platoon of hopheads. These young men and women were barely born then. They're the Reagan kids. They took one look at the 60s leftovers, which littered their childhoods, and said, give me a haircut and a job. They've got skills, training, education, and if they just quit calling me sir... And telling me you're the same age as my mom, they'd be the salt of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> but that that one paragraph really encapsulates a lot of what we feel about ourselves in Xers. We saw the destruction of Vietnam, Watergate, divorce. Yeah. We learned to be self reliant as latchkeys, and we understood that the future we'd have to be productive. It's kind of what we make of it. We um, we went to school. We're probably the last generation that said, you know what, I'm going to go into accounting and not French literature. <laughs> you know? Oh. You know, because it, 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 sociologically, it said that we're the last generation that found post-secondary education to be financially remunerative. Okay, that's Now, fair. part of that is, yes... The cost of post-secondary education has skyrocketed. It's ballooned, yeah. It's so ballooned. Our but first year at Bellarmine, tuition was seventeen thirty-five a semester. A semester. Yeah, yeah. It was thirty-five hundred bucks to go for a whole year. Yeah. Um, you can't take a class for thirty-five hundred dollars <laughs> right now. No. In a single semester, a single three-credit-hour class 
at a public university costs more than that. Yeah. Now, uh, probably our parents... Now, granted, my parents didn't go to college. I don't know if... No, I, my father went two years. Mm, but, okay. Mm, mm. So my wife's uh, dad went for a couple of years uh, in the 60s. You know, probably they said something similar. Yeah. Yeah. But to the degree... I don't know that... It, it, you know, at one time, yes, it was... As a percentage of income, it was at one level. It was still expensive. But now as a percentage of income, it's a much higher... Not just in cost in dollars... But as a percentage of income, it's huge. Right. right. It's possible that, I mean, my kids didn't go to these schools, but uh, with my middle child going to Bellarmine came close, um, that many parents, one year of schooling for their kids costs more than they make mm-hmm. in a, an entire year. Yeah. Right. How do you afford yeah. that? And then, you know, so not only has the cost gone up, but in our, our generation, again, with that practical street going through us, we are the ones who went into business, IT, accounting. At the time we were there, accounting was the biggest department at Bellarmine, as I recall. Uh, yes. You're exactly right. Yeah, cause yes, it, and Bellarmine's MBA back then was was nationally recognized. It was, it it was, was the primo, thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could go the accounting department or business department and move into um, that MBA program. And, nursing and you was were huge gonna too. Get, yes, you were going to get your money back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was. Uh, it and, was. A, and it, now. Yeah. The value. The value for dollar was was yeah. excellent. Then still is there. Actually, they are really good about making sure they they get their kids jobs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bellarmine has a very high placement. Rate. But yeah, I think we were the last generation then to focus on those. Yeah. Majors, hard skills. Those hard skill majors that we knew would at least give us those opportunities, and we would look for. You know, that life balance in other places, whereas the younger generations feel like they have to have that life balance in everything. Well, that's such a myth anyway. And, and it is. It is a huge myth. Because who decides what is the correct... Because it implies that you have 50% of your life is X and yeah. 50% of your life is Y or some formula. And that's just such bull yeah. crap. Yeah, bovine excrement. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, because who decides how much of your life should be spent in any one area? And as I've tried to tell people, like doing marriage prep and other things, there is a time when you will spend more time at work than you do with your family because you're taking care of your family. That's right. Whereas, you know, twenty years later, when your kids are gone, you're going to look at it and think, "Oh my God, I wish I hadn't spent so much time at work." But you did that because you're yeah. providing home and. That's right. You know, food on the table. Well, and... well, delayed gratification is something that you learn over time as you age. And in fairness to the younger generations, they were not taught to do that much. We were because mm-hmm. we had we, because of the flexibility that we've talked about that we were necessary. Delayed gratification comes far easier to us than to the generations well, that come after us. And you know, and the smart that I think is one of the of reasons too. why Gen X is the best generation is because we still have that concept of delayed gratification. Correct. Now, granted, we're gonna we would have learned that from our parents. Mm-hmm. So but those on, on of our too, though, because are, on our own as well. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's something that. Well, if you if you take anybody and leave them on their own, they are not going to choose delayed gratification. All right. Yeah. They're going to have to have had that introduced to them somewhere. Right. So, people our age and later, honestly, I, I even though I call us the uh, you know the best generation, we failed. Because we are, our generation, not we personally, are the helicopter parents. Yeah, we are. We are oh. the parents. We are the hoverers. That did not want to make our kids want for anything. We, we did not, as a generation, instill upon them uh, the concept of delayed gratification. The concept that, yes, it's okay to work for something. That it The is, concept of you potential don't, scarcity. That you don't have to go to, to college. Yeah. Not everybody should go, much less can go. Yeah, uh, it's just so but we it, did fail in that sense. Yeah, I, will, I mean, I will, yeah, but we've been so successful that it's hard to justify waiting on it. Yes, because so much is available. It is because of what we were able to do, and it, it's only in retrospect that we yeah, see, see where we failed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but you know, just to think about the things that our generation has gone through. That we, you know, we recovered. Um, again, we're the generation that after every economic scare, whether it's 1987 or 2007, that got back out into 
the economy and made it recover. Um, you know, we watched our spaceship blow up. We were the first generation to see a spaceship blow up. Twice, actually. Yeah, yeah you know. twice. Yes. Yeah. Apollo 1 was the launch pad fire, but we didn't see that happen. Right. I mean, we, well, they didn't. We watched the Challenger on television. Yep. The Challenger explosion is the defining cultural moment for our age as the Kennedy assassination was mm-hmm. for our parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it couldn't happen. Right. Before that. It's like, well, no, that, that kind of that doesn't happen. The, the space program's thinking. always been a success. Everything always works. Until it doesn't. Until, Until it, doesn't. it doesn't. And, it, you know, that was very defining. But we, we, again, that resilience then comes back. All right, well, okay. It got figured out, and we're going to move on. Again, the the economic dislocations. You know, you you think you guys have seen them, but guess what? We we went through Black Friday in eighty seven, right? Seven. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, actually, I don't think it was a Friday. I think it was, it was I think it was a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. It was during the week. Yeah, so it was just you know one of those days in eighty seven. But everything. Well, it's easy covered. for us back then because we could look at each other and laugh and say. It wasn't our money. It wasn't our money. Um, or, it, you know, as somebody once said, I forget who it was that said it, but it's, it's all paper money at that point. It's, it's yeah. Although it wasn't technically paper, it was all, uh, you know, ones and zeros even then. Yeah, it was just lines on a, on a, a letter. Yeah, yeah. Ledger. On a ledger. So, yeah. A ledger is, an, a, is a non-electronic spreadsheet for those of you who are not, not as old as we are. <laughs> well, accounts. But we're, yeah, accounts. our generation is, is that resilient one that can manage anything, that can do everything um so let me ask you we don't do fear well it's not that we don't do fear because everybody has fears it doesn't control us but i think we are far better at i I think it just goes back to the adaptability yeah Uh, we are adaptable in so many different ways because we've had to be See, that's the thing. I think that's what it is. Yeah, we've had to be. We've Necessity had to be. is the mother of invention. Yeah. We had to deal with uh, divorce either, in my case, literally, although kind of not literally because my parents still live in the same house. They got, they got along together better after divorce than they did while they were married. I don't get it. People don't understand it when I tell them this, but it, it is what it is. Uh, but, you know, certainly we all knew multiple kids mm-hmm. yeah. that yeah. had to deal with yeah, the 50% level came of came to be a reality in our generation right. and for the other 50% they know somebody we grew in an age when uh, the rust belt became a thing yes. when people you know in the 50s people moved to places like Michigan for jobs yeah in the 70s and 80s they moved out of Michigan for jobs yeah uh, because society was changing you know we changed from manufacturing uh, uh, economy to an uh, information economy. And it's even more so, you know, actually really a service economy. It's now an information economy. Yeah. So it's even diff- more different than, than it was. So we've had to learn how to adapt. And again, it's adapting from an apple to an orange as opposed to a Granny Smith to a Red Delicious. <laughs> That's a pretty good image. I mean, you think, of, I mean, you want to yeah. use that kind of analogy. So it's not it's it's different from going to a flip phone to a smartphone to a Windows phone. That was a that, that was a major thing. But then from a you know flip phone or a razor phone, you remember those? Those oh, yeah. were a big deal because those were so futuristic looking. You know, <laughs> yes, two thousand four. Oh yeah, all the rich people had them. Yeah, but then you know, it, and granted, from that to a, a an iPhone and, and and an Android phone is a major shift, but. It was still not that different because we'd had similar devices prior to that. But that's probably the last big cultural technological, or maybe not, last big technological shift. Now it's all kind of the same. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it's, it's again, it's a matter of degrees. And that ability to adapt has just been part and parcel of who we are from the beginning. Yep. Yep. And it's not that people don't have to change now, but. I don't know. Part of it is some. It's what they're choosing to be adaptable about. Is I think the difference between our generation and those that came after us. Boomers and their parents. You know the the World War II generation before. And the granted, a good number of those are gone now because it's just it's sheer age. Mm-hmm. Would have said, well, how can you be more adaptable in learning how to 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 live in the you know growing up in the in the thirties. 
when literally you didn't know if you were going to eat that day, much less have a job. So it's a different kind of adaptability, maybe. Sure. But I mean, it was all, the cultural changes. I think are really what define uh, the yeah. generations. Well, yeah, now. adaptability does not necessarily it it doesn't stand or fall on adversity because they faced adversity, whereas we didn't. Right. But we sh- we're still you know, their adversity was shall I say somewhat predictable. It was, Te- or, or, or a degree, uh, to at degree, least yeah. to a degree. Whereas technological change is, by definition, not because it's completely new. You don't know what to expect. Well, Although, as you say, once once the sea change happens, then you can adapt and you and you ride the wave for a while until another, until another sea yeah. change. I mean, when you look at all the technology that we take for granted that we have here in this room, mm-hmm. yeah, every one of these things were concepts we grew up with. That's right. Now, whether or not we thought we'd see them in our lifetime is another thing. Mm-hmm. But they were easily understood. Uh, you know, it's only the expressions that I think drive well, us crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm still waiting for a computer to have an effective L-Cars uh, interface. Uh, but you know what? Those L-Cars are not really that great. They're all text. And you've, they're, they're all like five buttons to do 400 things. <laughs> they're going to be hitting those buttons like, you know, for 20 times longer than we do with a full-size keyboard. Yeah. So, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we're not really that far from that sort of thing when you look at what you can do with uh, an Android or an iPhone or any kind of Android. I mean, granted, those well, are only two. Yeah, and I mean, when you think about the concept of sitting at some kind of console and the screen is big and away from you, that you can do right now. Yeah. You know, you, you could, in some concept or another, build... Data's console or Wesley Crusher's console, but yeah, underneath it wouldn't be light up. It would be a keyboard and a trackball or a keyboard and a mouse, but it would be in front of you while you sat in a recliner and then your 75 inch TV, you could cast, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the, the windows uh, screen or the Mac screen to it. Yep. And you, you could do essentially what they were doing. Sure. Um, and then, you know, when you have your, Zoom family reunion because <laughs> you can't go see anybody. Put it on right. TV, right? Well, yeah, we've done that, and it's it's, it's not it's not hard to do. We figured a lot of that stuff out because a we had to, but you know it. We've also well, to be fair, we weren't the only generation that figured that stuff out. No, no, but we've, we've uh, to. Uh, yeah, but it, it keeps getting better, and I think but, we have a lot to do with that. Well, I mean, yes and no. I mean, we're it, not afraid to try. We're not afraid to try. And, you know, young people, certainly when it comes to technology, are not afraid to try. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that... that but they, they expect an immediate result. Is yes, what that, I that is a different thing. Yes, what that I have is, is, well, why doesn't this do this? Well, it will. You just got to go through it the right way. Just start here. You started in the middle. Just start here, and then it'll work. Are we patient, and they're not? Or is it yes. a maturity issue? We, under, we understand there's a there's a setup to it that you've got to, the steps yeah. you've got to do. Whereas they're very they're so used to something immediate, and Apple's already thought it up for them. Yeah, they've just got to do this. You know, tap tap. Okay, it's done. Well, no. Yeah. Every once in a while, there's a few more setup steps than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we were doing the last batch of episodes. You know, I've gone over to the dark side and, and now have. Yes. an iPhone yeah. and as much as I, I truly I, this is true I despise Apple as a company I think they are far more as a company a company culture far more arrogant and far more controlling than, than Bill Gates ever dreamt of in his wildest wet dreams yeah. and they get away with things that Microsoft you know never even could have hoped to do when they were the 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 Big Mac Daddy in the '90s, when they were mm-hmm. literally talking about breaking up Microsoft, yeah, which you know into an applications and an OS division, which you know to now it's like why the hell would you even do that? Yeah, and it's not just a size thing. Um, you know the amount of money that they sit on in in cash accounts, something like two hundred billion dollars now. Oh yeah, absolutely. that's obscene. Yeah, because, because you're walking they away. They can't figure out what to do with that. <laughs> well, it's obscene for a couple of reasons. Yeah. I think they're beyond a certain point. Yes, I think you are gouging customers. That's when you get to be immoral. I think they they're price, they are overpriced. Yet I have paid it. Just because you can pay it doesn't mean you should charge it. Right. Well, I mean, you know, probably Martin's over there going like, ah. Uh, yeah, but, that's right. There's a, there's a morality issue there. But I think there is. I think there really is a morality issue there. But also, that's a couple hundred billion dollars that they're not 
putting to good use. Not making it work. Not yeah. They're, it's yeah. cash. Yeah. I don't mean their value in stocks or equipment or burying anything. their talent in the ground. Yeah. They're scriptural on you there. There's yeah. you know that's that's a bad thing. I think well, it, it truly you're right, is. You know, and from an economic standpoint, of course it's a bad thing. Yes. You know, it, it, that, it, you know, wouldn't you use it to make more? Make fun of Microsoft plenty, but one thing about Windows Microsoft products is. I always try to say, well, there's more than one way to skin that cat. Yes. You go, you can go, all right, I don't want it to go that way, or something weird happened in there. Let's go around this way, and we'll accomplish the same thing. With Apple, there isn't. There's, so, there's one straightforward, and that has value. Well, to it does, because the thing I do straightforward, like. straightforward, but... There, you well, know. then again, us Generation X folks, is we like flexibility and adaptability, yes. well, and, and, I I have, s- and Apple ain't that. Yeah, well, so this is... I have two points to make. One yes. is... Is what you're saying. Gen X is Windows. Millennials are Apple. Yeah. I mean... I must have telepathically picked up on that because that's kind of exactly what I was yes. trying to think. Because, just as you said, Windows is true. Windows, there are multiple ways to do everything. And there's a keyboard way, there's a mouse way, there's a now a touchscreen way, and there's probably variations in each one of those. Yeah. With Apple, there may be multiple ways to do things, but there are far fewer... And, you know, you tend to get locked into... I mean, everybody tends to get locked into their own preferences. Yeah. But, yeah, I think in many ways that you could put it that way. Well, I mean, but Apple is creating the preferences by giving you folks only so few. But this is this is their genius, and this is why I've gone... One of the reasons why I've gone with some of the Apple products. And that is their integration is phenomenal. It truly is. Yeah. They make fantastic hardware. Yeah. The OS is sometimes still frustrate me. But the integration of all the devices. So I've got an Apple Watch. And this Apple Watch, even though it does almost exactly the same thing as my prior Samsung Watch, just about every one of them it does better. Yeah. And I hate to admit that, but it's true. Just as a good example, uh, almost all smartwatches, Fitbit, Apple, Samsung, all of them, they like to count the flights of stairs you do because that's a great uh, Mm -hmm. form of exercise. The Samsung Watch never got it right. Almost never. I could not do one flight of stairs in my house and have it get counted. Not unless I quickly went around the corner and went around the up the, the flight of stairs going up to the second floor, from the basement to the first, and then from the first to the second. If I was lucky, it would count that as one flight. Because it, it has to figure out the spatial... Because if you just go up to flight, you have it moved linearly in the house, right? Well, I don't know what it's... Because like the, the Fitbit is, almost always got it. Yeah. Did a great job, but for whatever reason, the Samsung doesn't. The Apple is phenomenal at getting every flight of stairs. I, do, I don't know what to do, but that's just an example. Yeah. Um, and the integration being able to, like, for instance, you have Apple AirPods. And again, I'm, I'm not a company apologist. I'm just the hardware I'm really enjoying. You know, you have the AirPods, and you can seamlessly switch between the watch, the phone, your iPad, and your Mac. With just a flick of the button. I can answer a phone call on my watch, my iPad, or the phone. Yeah. So, in many ways, it's allowed me to be flexible on how I work, even though the options are more limited, you know, because you're, you're locked into that. So, flexibility is not just being able to do different things. or you know, Really, for us, it's adapting to the, the options that are available mm-hmm. more easily. You know, kids today say, well, you know, I can do whatever I want. Well... You're using the same tool to do a lot of different things, but what happens if you take that tool away? You know, do you know how to look something up in an encyclopedia? <laughs> no, you probably don't even know what the hell an, exci- an encyclopedia they is. They got burned, probably. Yeah, they, they might be holding a door open somewhere, perhaps, or uh, but there you don't find those things around right. much. So we are, I guess, put it really crudely, we are the. Uh, cro magnon even though technically cro magnons are not the ancestor of human humanity, but we are the first humans compared to the Neanderthals. We're the tool users. Okay. Right? Yeah. All right. That's cool. Yeah. We are the we are the we have the ability to create and use new tools better than those who came before us and who came after us, because there may be better tool users, but not necessarily new tool creators. If you, yeah, absolutely. Would you, would yeah. you say that's and fair? They're not, they're not... They are 
they are good tool users, but they get to one tool and they stick with it. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, we're able to see that it's possible to, okay, I can set that tool down and pick up this other tool, which may still work. Right. So, yeah, I mean, Gen X, uh, you know, if you've ever listened to uh, grunge music, you're welcome. Um, we did that. That's right. You know, um, there was there was some. I mean, I, I kind of make fun of angsty and all that stuff, but we are the first ones with with some angst that we we overcame. And um, you know, Cobain is our our voice to a degree. See, I reject like, that entirely. I do too. Sorry, not not a, not. A, I do. Uh, I don't. I think there are many other uh, really great. Mainly because the guy had everything. Had everything, and he committed suicide. Now, I'll grant you, I don't know whether he had the same kind of mental issues that Robin Williams did, because he also seemed to have everything in committed suicide, and he yeah. said he's one of our heroes, too. Yeah. Well, you know, and, but again, you, you but chart that. Suicide, you right, probably you, do have those. You chart that progression, though. You know, 80s movies, we're, we're the 80s movies. We, if we didn't make them, we made them popular. We, we're the ones that grabbed onto them. We're the ones that made them stick on cable. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then again, you moved into. If it weren't grunge. for us, there would be no Star Wars because they never would have been able to make new movies. Yep. Okay. Fair but, enough. Yeah. You know, grunge, the emergence of hip hop, is is a Gen X thing it to is. a large degree. Most of the big time uh, early performers mm-hmm. are Xers, um, especially as as you move from that early sort of. Uh, dance hip hop into the more uh, culturally relevant you know social statement hip hop Mm -hmm. um, the hardcore stuff Um, you know so that we had we had uh, you know this broader range of, of artistic expression than boomers I would say that's probably fair. You know, yes, yes, boomers. Okay, we'll give you some credit for some great early rock and roll. Sure. That's partially so, because we stand on the, the shoulders of giants. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's mostly, most of the time that is true. Yeah. That as creative expressions flower, what comes later is better. Now, it's not always true because when you look at uh, the late 19th century into the 20th century, uh, I would not necessarily argue, even though the, the, breadth of artistic expression exploded, a lot of that was just pure crap. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I know Jackson Pollock is a famous artist and he's lauded, but it's still drizzling paint on an effing canvas. Yeah. I but don't it, find much artistic value in it. Yeah. I mean, but so you, you see a, a broadening in popular culture of art, artistic expression under Xers. Mm-hmm. Um, independent filmmaking yeah. has, has a big renaissance. Um, and, and, you know, we learned how to identify with figures in, in the popular media uh, that meant a lot to us beyond, I think, what other generations did. How so? And it's, I think we, there was something for everybody in our generation that you could identify with. Uh, if you identified with Farmer Ted in 16 Candles, or you could identify with Jake in 16 Candles. We were there. I think other generations were narrower. You, you know, you identified with, you tried to identify with that successful high school hero. Yes, I see what you're saying. Yes. Our generation saw the value in, you know what, I'm never going to be Jake, but I'm cool with being Farmer Ted. Yes. Okay, I see exactly what you're saying. Yes, that is very true. If you weren't, prior to us, even in the 70s, if you weren't, the football captain and the cheerleader, then, you know, you were the loser. Yeah, there was there was no, or not to the same degree at least, a differentiation of the social groups. Diversification. Diver- yeah, and, and you just, everybody wanted to be the same guy. Yeah. And, and I think our generation, were the, we were the first ones to say, we can be comfortable being something else. Yeah. You know, and, and I think some of those independent filmmakers, the, that new generation of filmmaker, helped us do that. And John Hughes, Kevin Smith. Yeah. 
And that's not to say that, you know, because the, the hippies are probably say, well, that's a bunch of crap. Well, no, because before that kind of thing, not being the, the, the preppy yeah. all-star, uh, the rebellion against, it, it was a rebellion against that sort of thing or that, you know, that clean cut, uh, uh, you know, flat top kind of haircut from the 50s image yeah. to the extreme. Yeah. Whereas we have mainstreamed the idea that you don't have to be that. That yes, you can be Farmer Ted, as well as Jake or Jake rather. Yeah. Or you might even move from being Farmer Ted to being Jake. Because I mean, let's face it, you know, some of us might have identified with Farmer Ted more in high school than we did with Jake, but you know, we're better than Jake now. So you know. Well, I mean, I still don't have a Porsche. No, but you know, honestly, overrated. Yeah, I don't know. You know, is uh, the port that Porsche nine thirty Cabrio way? Mm, that was I wanted one of those or nine twenty eight. We're gonna do a hoopage you about the cars we wanted, wished we'd had. So yeah. put a pin in that one, boys. Because yeah. we can. We're gonna do Actually, I had the car that I wanted that I want now. I still want to. I want to get another seventy seven Chevy Nova. Oh yeah, I really that was a very that, common yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I had one too. Nova's. Yeah. You had seventy eight, but it wasn't a Nova. You had no. I had, had seventy seven Nova. Not when we were in college. No, I uh, yeah. The, the blue, the blue, and the two tone. Maybe it was, maybe it was seventy eight. Maybe, it didn't maybe have it seventy. Same. May have been seventy eight, but it's two tone Nova. Yeah, the blue and the white. Blue and the white. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. been seventy eight. To be honest, that's a long time ago. It was, yeah. Yeah. Um, Three fifty. But anyways, you know, we. Great car. I think we mainstreamed the idea that yes, you could be more than and be okay, not just in, as young adults, but as adults. Period. I mean, let's face it, we laid the groundwork for the cultural diversification that you see today. Mm-hmm. Whether you agree with that or not is, ir- is irrelevant. Our generation laid the groundwork. Millennials you know, may think they invented this, but they did not. Yes. And, they and, have built on what we put out there. Yeah, as with Ferris Bueller, we learned how to be cool with all the... Uh, oh, I wish I could remember all the, all the groups that he was popular oh, with. Oh, yeah. That she reads off. Oh, the... Yeah. The dweebs and the sportos. Yeah. Uh, as she lists, uh, they all adore him. Yep. Yeah. Ferris Bueller is, he's hes the ultimate uh, Gen Xer. Yeah. Yeah. He seems like a slacker, but he put a lot of effort into slacking. He did. And there's a lot of work going into taking a day off from school. Yeah. Which, you know, now as an adult, you realize how much work goes into taking off a day, taking off from a day of work. Mm-hmm. It's easy to identify with that, yeah, <laughs> with that yeah. movie and that sense. But it is, you know, that great, he understood how to make all that technology, and it's like, all I wanted was a car, and I got, I a, got computer. a computer. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Ferris Bueller, John Hughes, he definitely took our pulse. Oh, yeah. And knew, knew well, what you know, we Breakfast Club is another great example of, yeah. of that. Uh, to me, that, I think, is one of the, the best 80s movies um, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. But it's a great illustration of how, for all their differences, uh, they really could be friends. And it's when you take when you get rid of it, it because the the underlying thing was they were all there were all things they were afraid of. Yeah, they were all there was all there was some type of failure they were all afraid of. Yeah, and granted, that's a common thing. You know, yeah. part of that's the high school experience. Yeah, but I think. And maybe that's just the genius of John Hughes, but you know, I think that expression of it, uh, I think, played out. Whether that's intentional or not, it was just yeah. you, know, you know, it's just a, uh, a lucky convergence of, of concepts and expression. But you know, that's yeah, you know, you're, I, the Breakfast Club. Yeah, I mean, that really starts to feel like that is the quintessential Gen X movie. Because certainly the vice principal is... He's a boomer. He's a boomer. Yep. And held in substantial contempt. He makes $34,000 a year. He's respected. He's got a job and a car and a house. (laughs) Who the pain. And he was, you know, uh, he was just... A martinet. A martinet, one of my favorite words. He's a martinet. Uh, You're all being punished because I say you're being punished. Uh, But on the other hand... So just to bring us back to reality, which again, because we're adaptable, we can do this. Yeah. He sits around with Carl having a drink, 
complaining about the younger generation. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not what we're trying to do here. And no. But when you're when you're saying that you're the best as a generation, it's going to sound like you're you're dissing on the rest of them, and they're not because you know. Well, I, I am. Well, like, yes, but I mean, we we can acknowledge. <laughs> I mean, certainly yes, but we we are not saying that all boomers, millennials, and Gen Zers are weenies. Are, are weenies? Right, they're not all weenies. Um, and we certainly, you know, they don't like us. We don't like them in many ways, and that's partially, you know, young against old you know parents against kids and, and yeah. so forth and and i get that um i guess for me the point of this episode is not just to to you know yank our own chain so to speak uh to, to be in a, a gen x circle jerk it's to to point out that why we are, are are the best is that adaptability that ability to roll with the, the yes. changes that seems we, to be where we've kind is of something here. that is to be not to be held over somebody's head and say, hey, you can look at us and learn something. Learn something. We're Gloria Gaynor. We can survive. Oh, oh, dude, dude. (laughs) Man, that's that's some serious stuff. Blow it up. Oh, my gosh. And and for all those under a certain age, look it up. It's actually a very great song. It is. It's a great song. It is. It's it's that one disco exemplar that's just really, I don't know. We can talk a few few others there. But that's that's another... But I mean, it's like you know, it's like Rocky in the in the fourth movie. You oh, know? love that movie! You know, yeah, where he nearly gets his ass kicked, but then he comes back and beats the ever living shit out of that guy. The Ivan Drago, I must break you. Yeah, yeah I must I break that you. One. That's um, if he dies, he dies. Right. You know. Look at that. And then the next for him. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, who didn't cheer in the That's theaters right. yeah. in the, for that? I mean, yeah. out loud. But anyways, but and I I would love to see generations after us not just our kids but you know to be able to 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 get back to having that adaptability that i think is see it's not necessarily the root of societal problems but it is certainly a factor in a lot of the issues we have Uh, even people from our generation have lost some of that adaptability because we have you know we've talked about this before where we have gone into our our separate camps and as I said in one of the the episodes last time we recorded, you know, you're seeing this being expressed in the media that people in the in the major media are now saying, "Oh, well, it's bad that we have you know turned everybody evil." Of course, what they mean is it's bad that their opponents think that way. It's okay if they think that yeah, way because yeah. you know their opponents are truly evil. Yeah, that's right. But it's you know that adaptability, that ability to that, re- that resilience, that that grit. I always look to like to talk about grit. How you get through things. How you overcome things. Critical thinking. It's, it's yeah. huge right. for us. We, we've make, make, taken that to an art form, I think. And I think that's a skill. If there's one thing that we have that we could, should be able to pass along to those that come after us, it's that. Because yeah. as we probably know, uh, it's in short supply these days. Right. I Confirmation mean, bias rules, it seems. Well, it that's does. not for us. And, and you know, and, that and, lack of adaptability, I think the greatest yeah. example of that is the need for a safe space. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very good exemplar of it. Yeah, perspective. Yeah. Having yeah. some perspective of, you know, crappy things have happened. They'll happen again. We'll get through this. The sun will come up tomorrow. If there if there's something that needs to be addressed, let's let's address it. But we can we can have the perspective to be resilient and to overcome and get things accomplished. Well, Dr. King said it well, we shall overcome. I mean, that's, yeah. huh. we took that to heart in many ways. Well, and, you know, to go back to our uh, Nietzscheisms, you know, whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's not always true, because obviously, especially nowadays, you know, you, uh, COVID may not kill you, but it certainly may not, may, may not leave you stronger. Yeah. yeah. But experiences and, and battling through things does make you, I think, stronger and enhances your perspective. Yeah, it is. It's, and our generation does that. It's right. It I is think, its own reward. Any other. Yeah, yeah. And, and it is a virtue with that. Yeah. That, as you say, with the need for safe spaces, seems to have been lost. We that's that's a failure, I think, on our generation. Oh, it is. That's because yes. we should not have produced a, a next generation where that's something that they think of. They should be able to think we can handle this. Well, we don't and, like it, and it's I blame, crappy. We can handle it. I mean, you know, that's what we the, and That's what they should be doing. I blame those in academia for that because obviously that that did not come out of the corporate world. That came out of universities. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, well, gentlemen, uh, 
Being this, this was a hoopa jube, I let us ramble a bit longer than normal. Yeah, well, sometimes our hoopa jubes go short, but sometimes they go long. They go long. long. Yeah. Uh, you so we're, we're, we're at the 125 mark. Wow. So, Didn't think we'd gone that far. But yeah, yes. we did. So it's, then we should definitely wrap it up. We so, should wrap up. The verdict is we are still better than the other generations. Gen yeah. X rules. All the rest of y'all drool. Yep. And, and sometimes for boomers, unfortunately, it's literally. <laughs> so, but, it, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm not a, my as we mentioned my folks were were boomers I and mean, I'm just not a fan um I, I, I again I feel they get too timid to oh no we can't deal with this but. well it's funny because you know they started a lot of changes but they were not the same kind of changes that yeah, we've dealt they, with yeah um they seem we, to have we've dealt with the fallout yeah yeah we dealt with the fallout came out better Whereas they started the changes and then didn't know what to do afterwards. They were right. like, oh crap, what now? Uh, indecision is its own evil at times, well, I'm afraid. Well, I think it's also a, a side effect of, um, you know, for the longest time they drove everything and now that they're not in the driver's seat, they're lost. Yeah. Well, Whereas I think in our generation, we've almost never been in the driver's seat in that respect. Yeah. At least not the way that, I mean, we have been, but we've not been concerned yeah, about yeah, it. We're, we're kind of in I the... Guess, Let's put it that way. We've not been concerned about it. Yeah. We recognize that the day will come when we're not. And we're okay yeah. with that. It's I mean, the natural well, order of things. Yeah. I don't know. We, we were at, will be. I'm not so well, sure I'm okay with that. But Again, it's, it's hard to make a monolithic yeah. statement like we, that. We were at that peak of consumer concern. You know, we were at that target demographic before anybody realized you had to have a target demographic. Yeah. So, like, we miss our shot to be in the driver's seat. Because nobody understood, you got to put somebody in the driver's seat. So, you know, it was really after us. I was like, oh, young people buy a whole lot more stuff than old people do. I think we were part of that, but it, it was, it certainly, because, you know, obviously advertisers, I think they've, they've been, I think they've been more sophisticated than, than I think what, maybe what you're giving credit for. Yeah. But it's been, it's certainly refined because of data. Yeah. Yes, you know. there's a lot. Technology has made that an, an enormously yeah. far more robust. They've been able to, to fine tune it to a degree that <coughs> nobody understood before. And yeah. plus, with more stuff to spend your money on, that's probably changed somewhat. Yeah. You know, you know, we make a lot more smaller purchases as a country than than we did yeah. 50 years ago. Yeah. Because there's more small there's things more to buy. Stuff to have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, rise of Amazon's a great obvious one. On well. That. The technology, the phones, the tablets, the computers. Think about all the accessories that you have to go with that. Yeah. That alone uh, is, is a huge portion. Yeah. Uh, that $15 iPad stand. Got to have it. Click. Yeah. Um, yep. You're exactly right. So, anyways. Yeah, Francis. Yes. What's next? What's next? Uh, we're going next month. It's February. And it's going to be, we're going to talk about civil rights. You know, we did Dr. King as a hero, but we realized, you know, that's not really, I mean, that's a huge portion of it, but there's so much more we should talk about on that. It's kind of a palate mm-hmm. cleanse. Like we've said, uh, World War II is our theme for 2021, but it's not every month. You know, we'll, we'll bounce around a little bit. This is one of those, it's February, it's Black History Month. We really should be able to do, there's lots of folks that were involved in that, dare I say, sea change uh, socially for us. And we should celebrate those, yes. and because most of them are remembered, but maybe they're not. Yeah, let's yeah. let's talk it's a little bit about that. Important not to let them be forgotten. That's exactly right, and they, and they span the gamut. We're going to talk about all the ones you know, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, etc. Maybe some that you don't. Yeah, it's going to be a great episode. Hope you enjoyed another pointless discussion of eternal questions. Remember, new episodes publish every Friday at noon Eastern. Spread the word. We're on all the major podcast platforms. And leave us a comment or review because that helps others find us. We're on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website, snakesandotters.com. I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. Join us next week, same snake time, same otter channel.